All right, Math 8 students, we are go ahead, going to get started with Module 4, and I'm going to start out the lesson notes with just a little bit of an overview because we are starting um, linear non-proportional relationships in this module, and our previous module was looking at linear proportional relationships. So we're just going to do a little breakdown here on uh, what all that is, and my Promethean is kind of working right now. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the definition of a linear relationship. And <coughs> so you can look at the word here, linear, and think line. So a linear equation or a linear relationship is an equation whose solutions create a straight line. So again, linear means line. So a linear proportional relationship is what we were doing in our previous module, module three. And that is, if we break it down, is a straight line which means it has a constant rate of change. or we can also say a constant uh, slope. Okay? And it goes through the origin. That's the second key there, is that it's a straight line, which is a constant rate of change or slope. And the second part is that it, which is the proportional part of it, is that it goes through the origin. And the origin is that zero, zero point on a graph have a hard time writing and talking. So the origin which is zero, zero. Okay? So that means this right here, this is our origin down here on this graph. This would be our y-axis and this is our x-axis. So linear line, proportional, origin. Think of that. Proportional is origin. Linear line through the origin. If we look at our linear non-proportional relationships, First thing we know is that it is linear, so it will also be a straight line. And which means constant rate of change. Or slope. However, it is different because it does not, non-proportional, does not go through the origin. And remember, the origin is the 0, 0. When x is 0, y is 0. OK. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and just get a quick review on a linear proportional relationship. I'm going to give you an equation in the slope form or slope intercept form. Sorry, not slope intercept form, just slope form. And in that case, this is also where we have m that is equal to k. So y equals m times x. Remember, k, our constant, is equal to m because k equals y over x and m equals change in y over change in x. So that is the slope form there, which is our rise, which is our vertical change, over our run, which is our horizontal change. So rise over run. So in the slope form here, we are looking at slope as our rate of change and our y values are dependent variables and our x values as our independent variables. But the m is the big thing here. So with linear proportional relationships, they're a straight line and they go through the origin, so all of our graphs are going to start at zero. So if let's look at the equation, and let's go ahead and write this in purple. 
y equals 3x. Okay, so 3 here is our slope because I'm looking at y equals mx. 3 is our slope, so m equals 3. And any time that we have a whole number, we put that over 1, right? Because we need to know what our rise and run is. So 3 over 1, which means our rise is 3, because it's a positive 3, and our run is 1. So if we're going to graph this as our slope, and we just pulled that from our equation, right? If we're going to graph this, we're going to start at the origin, because this is a proportional relationship, and it doesn't have anything additional here. It's just y equals mx. So we're going to start at the origin, and we're going to go up 3, and we're going to make each one of these count as 1. Some of you guys uh, made some of the really common errors of counting each square as one unit when they did not in some of the practice questions that we had along the way. So just make sure that you're counting by the correct unit. But we're going to make this nice and simple and count each one of these as a single unit. And then we go up to 10. So our slope, back to our slope, is slope is 3, which means rise of 3 and run of 1. And it's a proportional relationship, so we are starting at 0. So we're going to go up 3 and over 1 and put our first point. Then we're going to go up 3 and over 1. And then we're going to go up 3 again and over 1. Right? So that's our graph for the equation y equals 3x. And it's a straight line through the origin, so it is a linear proportional relationship. Okay, so we can go ahead and just find some points on here. And then with these points, what we're going to do is we're going to make a table. So in here, my x value is 1, and my y value is 3. Here my x value is 2, my y value is 6, and here my x value is 3, my y value is 9. And that makes sense with our equation, because if x is 1, right here, 1 times 3 is 3, which means that's my y. If x is 2, I plug that in, 2 times 3 is 6, and that gives me my y. Pretty neat, huh? One more time, we'll just look at this one. When x is 3, we plug it in, 3 times 3 is 9, which is kind of neat. Okay, so your table that we're making, and I'm going to scroll down a little bit here, should match your graph, right? because they represent the same equation. So the equation for the table is y equals 3x, and x value always goes on top, y value always goes on bottom, which is the opposite of the way we write slope, and so that's another place where we find ourselves making a common error, is that we're not flipping these values for slope. And so we're going to plug these in here. So when x is 1, right, 1 times 3 is 3, so y is 3, and that matches our point on our graph. And we know that's correct because we plotted our rise of 3 and our run of 1, right? Up 3 over 1. So when x is 2, y is 6. When x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. When x is 4, now we didn't graph this point, but we can plug it into our equation here. 4 times 3 is 12, so y would be 12. And let's go ahead and just do one more here. When x is 5, 5 times 3 is 15. And so if I'm making sure that I'm doing this slope uh, correctly, all of these should be equivalent ratios, and they should simplify down to the same thing, right? So all of these should simplify down to our slope of 3 or 3 over 1, right? Because remember, we want to flip these. So 15 over 5 would simplify down to 3 over 1. 12 over 4 simplifies to 3 over 1. 9 over 3 simplifies to 3 over 1, and so on and so forth. So does our table match our graph? Yes, it does. And it should because they both have the same equation. OK, so let's go ahead and look at linear non-proportional relationships. So the difference here is not is the difference here is only that these do not go through the origin. So they still make straight lines, but they do not go through the origin. Okay, and so what we use for non-proportional relationships is slope-intercept form. And you guys are going to get so sick of this. Maybe not. Maybe you'll find it's awesome and you'll love it. But we are going to get 
up close and personal with y equals mx plus b. This is the equation, y equals mx plus b. So it's just like slope form right here, except we add the b on the end, and b represents our y-intercept. So slope is m, intercept is b. So m equals slope, right, which is our rise over run, and b represents our intercept, so our y-intercept. And if we just look at the word y-intercept, that means this is where our line intercepts the y-axis, where it crosses the y-axis. And that is usually where we're going to start our graph, because we're not starting at zero for non-proportional relationships. We are starting somewhere on the y-axis, and that is given to us by our y-intercept. So y equals mx plus b, m is slope, b is y-intercept. And so that's when x is zero, y is something, and we represent that something with b. And you can think of start here. If y-intercept is our start, then slope is our move. And maybe that's how you can remember m is slope. It's how we move. So we're going to go ahead and look at the same equation, except we are going to add a y-intercept to it. So we have y equals 3x, and we're going to add plus 2. Okay? So this is the same. y equals 3x is the same. So our line should be the same with the exception that we are not starting at 0. We are starting at positive 2 on the y-axis. I know it's positive because I've got a plus sign here. So my y-intercept is telling me where I start. I'm just going to rewrite this over here where I've got a little bit more room. Move this here to the middle. So I've got y equals 3x plus 2. So 3 is my slope. And we know from our previous one, m equals 3, which means 3 over 1, because anytime you have a whole number, you put it over 1. It's a positive slope of 3 up and 1 over. Now we're looking at that y-intercept right here, and this is telling us where we start. So we start at 0 and 2. So when x is 0, y is 2. So I'm going to go ahead and come over here, and I'll just label these here real quick. 1, 2, I'm going to go up by 1, so if you want to number these with me. If I was smart, I would have numbered them first. I'm going to go up by one unit on my y-axis and one unit on my x-axis also. Okay, now my y-intercept is 2, right? I got this from here. And so I know that I'm going to start at y, x is 0, which is right here, and y is 2. So this is where I'm starting that graph. I'm not starting at the origin. Because I'm not starting at the origin, it is a non-proportional relationship but it is linear, so we'll still make a straight line. And then my slope is 3 over 1. And we got that from that equation of 3, right? m equals 3, so we move up 3 over 1. So I'm going to go from 2, I'm going to start here at 2, I'm going to go up 3, up 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1, and then it would keep going like that. And I'm just going to connect those lines. We'll pretend I drew a straight line. So this is a linear, non-proportional relationship because it is a straight line, but it does not go through our origin, which is this point right down here. And since we know that we're going to have to make a table, let's go ahead and find our point values. So our y-intercept here is 0 and 2. That's one of our first points. Our next one is 1 and 5. Then we have 2 and 8, and then the next one here would be 3 and 11. Okay. So you could use those points to determine the slope if you were only given point values. Remember, that would be your change in y values over your change in x values, right? 8 minus 5 would be 3, so it would be 3 over 2 minus 1, which is 1. So here we go with the table. And we've got the same equation for the graph above, and that is, whoops, what am I doing? 
y equals 3x plus 2, or our form y equals mx plus b. So x on top, y on bottom. This is not as easy as the other one because we have to take into account that we are adding 2 to every number. So when we start at 0, if we plug 0, and I'm going to do a little bit of work over on the side here so I can, those of you guys who are visual, you can see what we're doing. y equals 3x plus 2. And so I want to figure out what my y value is going to be if I have an x value of 0. So I'm going to plug 0 into my equation right here. So I have y equals 3 times 0 plus 2. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 equals 2. So y is 2, x is 0. So when x is 0, y is 2. Let's go ahead and figure all these out for 1, 2, 3, and 4. So again, I've got y equals 3x plus 2. And I'm going to plug in 1. So 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 equals 5. So y is 5 when x is 1. x is 1, y is 5. Does this make sense for our slope? If we go up 3 and over 1, remember this is opposite, if we go up 3 whoop, and over 1, does this make sense? Could we just be smart here and like, oh, well, I'm just going to count up three for every one that I go up here. Yeah, so that's another way you could solve that if you can connect those concepts. They won't always be that simple, so you do want to know how to plug this into the equation should you have an equation that's more complicated. So let's do this one here. y equals 3x plus 2, and this time we're going to plug in our value of 2. So let's plug in 2. So y equals 3 times 2 plus 2. Remember, multiplication happens first. 6 plus 2 equals 8. So y equals 8. Now again, if I am, am familiar with my slope and I know that my change in y is going to be 3, for every time I go plus 1 for my x, then I can just count these up by 3. So then it would be 11, and then this would be 14, right? And I can do that because this is plus 1 every time. So I know that this is going to be plus 3 because my slope is change of y of 3 and change of x of 1. Maybe that's a little bit confusing. If it's confusing, don't worry about it. You can always plug it into the equation and fill in the table from there. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this video. Nope, we're going to do one more first. And then I'll go ahead and make two videos for this introductory lesson. So let's go ahead and move this over here. So we're going to do one of these together. This is the Your Turn number one from your textbook. And it's saying Francisco makes $12 per hour. So this is our unit right here. $12 per hour. $12 per one hour doing part-time work on Saturdays. He spends $4 on transportation to and from work. The equation y equals 12x minus 4 gives his earnings y after transportation costs. And this is when he is working x hours. So x represents hours, y represents total earnings, 4 represents the cost it's of transportation to get to and from work. So we're going to fill in our table of values here. We don't have a graph, so we can't find points. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug values into our equation. y equals 12x, oops, not plus 4, because he's not getting money for transportation. He's losing money on transportation. All right, so let's backtrack there. And this is minus 4. Oh, I should just erase that. Make it look neat for you guys. Let's try that again. So we'll write the equation in here. Y equals $12 per hour, right? $12 per hour minus $4 for transportation. And 
let's uh, just go s make this simple. We'll do after one hour of work, two hour of work. Let's do four hours of work and then an eight hour work day. So just to jump it up and kind of play with variables a little bit, we'll put in more than just one, two, three, four. You could absolutely do one, two, three, four if you wanted. So to figure out um, our y value, how much he earns, we have to plug in how many, how many hours he worked into our equation. Right, so for our first value here, for one hour, we're going to plug it in for x because x represents hours. So we have 12 times one hour minus the four dollars of transportation. 12 times one is 12 minus four dollars for transportation gives us eight. So y equals eight. So when he works one hour, he makes eight dollars, which makes sense, right? He works 12 or he works one hour, he makes eight dollars because he had to spend some on transportation. Okay, let's go ahead and look at two hours. So we're going to plug that into our equation here. So y equals 12 times 2 minus 4. So 12 times 2 is 24 minus 4 is 20. So y equals 20 when x is 2. So at two hours worked, he's made $20. Let's plug four into the equation. I'm running out of room here. So I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. Y equals $12 per hour times four hours minus $4 for transportation. So 12 times four is 48 minus four is 44. So in four hours of work, he has made $44. And let's figure out what a full workday gets him. So y equals $12 per hour times 8 hours minus $4 for transportation. So 12 times 8 is, it's going to be 1, 8, $96 minus $4, he makes $92. So for 8 hours of work, he makes $92. And so that's how we'd use an equation to create a table. So given an equation, creating a table. Given an equation above, creating a graph. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop this video. I'll make a second video that goes a little bit deeper into examining linear relationships. If you feel good about it, you know, this is probably going to give you the base, basic understanding. If you want a couple more examples of looking at how linear relationships work in both proportional and non-proportional. I would watch the second video. We'll do one more um, example in detail and then we'll do another practice question together. So you can just kind of fast forward through what you need in that video if you'd like. All right, math aid students. Linear, non-proportional relationships. Here we go.